It is said at the time when the Roman Church was coming into the island of Scotland, that there was a clan chieftain who heard that one of these foreign bishops was traveling through the island. So he sent a messenger bring the bishop and his troop to his castle so that he could entertain the bishop and learn of his ways. The not very exciting life up in the island sometimes gets on a little different way. <laughs> so the messenger returned with the bishop and his troop, and they arrived just at dusk, just as the great harp was being lit, and the great hall was being lit prepared for dinner. So the chief had met the bishop on the steps. And the bishop, you have to understand, was not what most men would consider a great man. He was short and stout, but very short and stout. As he came in, he sort of brushed aside the chief and made his way to the dais at the end of the hall and took, not the guest place, the chief place. Well, the chieftain understood that this was a foreigner and might not understand. So he allowed that. And as the feast was served that night, and the bishop got perhaps a little too much of what his plan has been served, the chieftain noticed that his roving eye was all too often the chieftain's voice. Now, the chieftain, being of the old school, would have not minded this much. But his wife didn't think it was the right thing. But, again, being the host, he let it pass. Now, <clears throat> about halfway through the feast that night, his seneschal came to him and tapped him on the shoulder and said, My oh lord, there is a troop of traveling players at the door who would wish to come in. And Jesus said, But of course, we always allow strangers in and out of the and the seneschal said, But my lord, the head of the troop wants to take the druid's place for the feast hall. Well, there's been no druid sitting in the feast hall for more years than the chief wanted to believe And perhaps, again, there was a little too much of that potent alcohol beverage that the island once drank. It made him say, Aye, bring him forward and put him in the druid's place. So, in came the four players. There was a young man, tall, good-looking, bearded, who came and sat in the weird place. And with him was an older woman, a man dressed all in black with a hood over his face, and a young girl, or was it a boy? It was hard to tell. It was just at that age. And the other three sat at the end of the hall. Well, as the evening progressed, the bishop spoke more and more loudly about his ways, and how he thought all these heathen people should join his way. And the chieftain got angry and angry. And finally the bishop stood up and said, Well, I will now preach a sermon. And before the chieftain could say anything, the young man who had taken the druid's place at the peace hall stood up and said, Name the Lord Bishop and show me. And the bishop was startled, to say the least. He had not even noticed it. Young man came in. The young man continued and said, My Lord Bishop, the chieftain cannot speak to you the way he wishes to, because he is your host, and you have eaten his bread and drunk his need and wine. But I, I am sitting in the druid place, so it is my right to challenge you in any way that I think is good. The bishop said, Well, what kind of challenge would you provide? The young man said, Well, my I am free to travel with me. We'll give you a wager. We will wager that we can best you with the things we, are, we can do best. And if we lose, we will, in the morning, go into your chapel, wherever we may set it up, and give up our souls to your God. Well, of course, the bishop was in the business of collecting. <laughs> like a fair enough way to. But then the young man continued. He said, however, if you lose, you must give up what you most perceive, what you most want, wish to have. 
and that is your high position in the church. You become a wandering monk to teach the young people their letters. And the bishop said, well, he could, of course, better he looked around with this old woman, some strangely dressed man, and a boy, or was it a girl? It was hard to tell. So the young man said, very well. First, you will wrestle with the old woman. So the bishop took off his great coat, his gold, and silver, and jewels, and light, and met the old woman in the middle of the hall. Well, now the bishop, as I said earlier, no great warrior, but he could barely move this one. She just stood there, and she wrapped her arms around him, and she was old and frail, but he couldn't hardly move her. And finally, after what seemed like hours, she threw him to the ground. So he got up and dusted himself off and said, Well, bring on your next challenge. And a strangely dressed man came forward. And the young man said, Well, this man, all you have to do is look him in his face. It will be a staring conduct. Whoever breaks eye contact first, lose him. So the bishop said, What could you lose? So he stepped forward and looked into the cowl of the man in black and instantly looked away. It was like he'd never even really looked at it. And he realized now that he was losing two out of four. And he only had two more chances left to prove to these people, these misbegotten, even people, that the Roman church was the way to go. So he looked at this slight young thing in the corner and he said, Well, what, what, is, what am I doing to do with this thing? The young man said, We're to sing a song. The best song you know, and then she will sing hers. And so the bishop thought of his best hymn and opened his mouth, and nothing, absolutely nothing came out except his throat. And he tried again, and still it broke. So then the sweet young thing came forward and sang the most beautiful song that anybody in the hall had ever heard, and tears were almost shed. And finally, the young man came forward and said, I will give you this last chance to get all or nothing to either beat me or to beat me something. The bishop said, What must I do with you? He said, You must speak. You wanted to speak earlier a sermon. Now is your chance. Speak your best sermon. So the bishop inhaled a great breath and spoke. He spoke for minutes. He spoke for hours. It must have been at least three hours. He finally summed it up. He summed up the whole situation, the whole world situation, in one great sermon. Stop. Perhaps you'll recognize the woman that might be in the 